After completing this lesson, you will be able to improve query performance with the concepts of data file partitioning, define Hive query language or HiveQL, describe ways in which HiveQL can be extended, overview of data file partitioning. In the first topic of this lesson, you will learn to get an overview of data file partitioning. In the previous lessons, you have learned that by default, all files in a dataset are stored in a single Hadoop distributed file system, or HDFS, directory. Hive is considered a tool of choice for performing queries on large datasets, especially those that require full table scans. Hive has advanced partitioning features. Data file partitioning is very useful to prune data during query in order to reduce query times. There are many instances where users need to filter data on specific column values. Using the partitioning feature of Hive that subdivides the data, Hive users can identify the columns, which can be used to organize the data. Using partitioning, the analysis can be done only on the relevant subset of data, resulting in a highly improved performance of Hive queries. In case of partitioned tables, subdirectories are created under the table's data directory for each unique value of a partition column. You will learn more about the partitioning features in the subsequent screens. Let's begin with an example of a non-partitioned table. In non-partitioned tables, by default, all queries have to scan all files in the directory. This means that Hive will need to read all the files in a table's data directory. This can be a very slow and expensive process, especially when the tables are large. In this example, you can see that there is a state column created in Hive. The requirement is to convert this to a state-wise partition so that separate tables are created for separate states. The customer details are required to be partitioned by state for fast retrieval of subset data pertaining to the customer category. Remember that you can perform the same queries in Impala as well. In the next screen, you will see an example of how this table is partitioned state-wise so that a full scan on the entire table is not required. Here is an example of a partitioned table. This example shows you how the previously non-partitioned table is now partitioned. You can see that the state column is no longer included in the create table definition, but it is included in the partition definition. Partitions are actually horizontal slices of data that allow larger sets of data to be separated into more manageable chunks. This essentially means that you can use partitioning to store data in separate files by state, as shown in the example. At the time of table creation, partitions are defined using the partitioned by clause with a list of column definitions for partitioning. A partition column is a virtual column where data is not actually stored in the file. Partition table. In this demo, you will learn how to create a partition table in Hive. Type the command. In this demonstration, an external table which is partitioned by state is created. The column is string type, and the table will be stored in simply learn slash accounts by state directory in HDFS. Now, the command has created a partition table. This brings you to the end of this demonstration. You have now learned how to create a partitioned table in Hive. Describe partition table. In this demo, you will view the details of the partitioned table named accounts by states, which was created in the previous demo. Type describe accounts underscore by underscore state and execute. To see more details, you can type describe and the table name, which in this demonstration is accounts hyphen by hyphen state. You can now see all the other details along with the partitioned column details. This partitioned column is like a virtual column. This brings you to the end of this demonstration. You have now learned how to view the details of the partitioned table.
Now that you know what partitioning is, let's understand how you can insert data into partition tables. Data insertion into partition tables can be done in two ways or modes. Static partitioning, dynamic partitioning. You will learn more about these concepts in the subsequent screens. Let's begin with static partitioning. In the static partitioning mode, you can insert or input the data files individually into a partition table. You can create new partitions as needed and define the new partitions using the Add Partition clause. While loading data, you need to specify which partition to store the data in. This means that with each load, you need to specify the partition column value. You can add a partition in the table and move the data file into the partition of the table. As you can see in this example, you can add a partition for each new day of account data. With dynamic partitioning, partitions get created automatically at load times. New partitions can be created dynamically from existing data. Partitions are automatically created based on the value of the last column. If the partition does not already exist, it will be created. In case the partition does exist, it will be overwritten by the overwrite keyword, as shown in the example. As you can see, a partition is being overwritten. When you have a large amount of data stored in a table, then dynamic partition is suitable. Keep in mind that by default, dynamic partitioning is disabled in Hive to prevent accidental partition creation. To use dynamic partitioning, you need to enable it by using these settings. Set space hive.exec.dynamic.partition equals true semicolon. Set space hive.exec.dynamic.partition.mode equals non strict semicolon. Hey, want to become an expert in big data? Then subscribe to the Simply Learn channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in big data, click here.